Earl Glenn here at Township Chevrolet, shop foreman here with another edition of Tech Talk. Uh, we had a little vote online there and uh, you guys decided uh, to pick how to communicate with an advisor, which is a great topic. Um, so you get up in the morning, you're heading to work, you're driving your car, and next thing you know, boom, check engine lights on, your vehicle's not running right or something's going on, you know something's wrong. Instantly you got that kind of feeling of helplessness, you got to take your vehicle in, you're not sure what it's going to cost you, if it's going to cost you anything, is this under warranty, is it not under warranty? Um, so I'm just going to kind of give you a few tips that maybe kind of, and kind of let you know that maybe you're in control of the situation more than you think you are. So when you bring your vehicle in our drive through you're met with one of our uh, drive through staff out there. They're going to come out, they're going to take your information, make sure you're in the system, and if you are, get a pre-work order done or an appointment set up for you. This is kind of where you kind of preliminary discuss with them what you're coming in for. And you want to give them as much information as you can out there as a, to, to, to what each situation or what each concern you have. So if you've got three concerns, make sure you discuss those three concerns. If you've got a check engine light on, that's a concern. Car doesn't shift properly, it doesn't feel right, whatever the case may be. Or you've got a wind noise, or you've got a rattle, or a bump, or a clang. You're kind of going to go over the, that with the, advise, with the person out in the drive-thru. Um, once you get all that done, you do your walk around, you see anything, you're, any scheduled maintenance your vehicle should be, should be having done, which kind of, and that's there to kind of help avoid uh, the situation and maybe the reason why you're in today with the issue you have. Um, they're going to take you out to the service advisor. The service advisor, you're going to kind of go more in depth on the issues you're having with your vehicle. And you can cut down the diagnostic time, uh, which is going to cut down the cost for you and also get your car back to you quicker with just maybe giving the advisor some information on what you feel, see, hear, touch, uh, anything at all, even things you might not think would be related. Just for instance, so you're driving on the road in that, that morning in your vehicle, the check engine light comes on, it starts not to run properly. Well, what you need to do is, when did it happen? Uh, what time of day was it? Was the car sitting for a long time or did I, was it warmed up and I just restarted again? These are things that'll help the technician help diagnose the problem. Uh, when it happened, it, was there anything else that happened? You notice when your check engine light come on, did you also find that your gauges in your dash were funny or your, your uh, charge gauge was high or low or your, so you, you want to do is just a quick view of everything that's going on in the vehicle. Any information you can gather. Did you smell anything? Uh, did you see anything? Did you see any steam? Did you see any smoke? All these things will help the technician because when it comes in, you're the most valuable tool up until that point. Before they put their, any of their tools on, any of their diagnostic equipment, you're the most important tool that we have to kind of help diagnose the situation. So I'll just give you a kind of a, a quick example. If you uh, bring your vehicle in, have it towed in here, let's say, because it won't start. Well, if it says on the on the work order won't start that's what the technician sees and this is something you guys probably don't realize but there's two ways we can go down the path here. there's two diagnostic paths we can take number one is it a no start so meaning the engine cranked but wouldn't start or is it b did the engine not even crank so depending on which one uh what issue you had could send the tech in two different directions and the tech may interpret that different one tech may bring it in and go and check right away to see if that car maybe is intermittently not cranking properly the next technician may bring it in and check for fuel and fire of reasons why maybe it's cranking well, but it won't start. So that information, you can see how that can send them down two different paths. You may have a fellow, a technician that's checking all your battery cables and how strong your battery is and performing the battery test and a charge test because he's thinking and checking the starter wires and the key on wire, ignition switch wires when maybe that's not your issue at all. Maybe your car intermittently has an extended crank or it winds over fine, but it won't start sometimes. So all that information will help. The, the more that they, you can give the technician, the better they can do your diagnosis, the quicker they can do it, uh, which is gonna save you money and get your vehicle back to you. So when you come in, just keep in mind, when, where, why, how, and anything that you, th even if you don't think it's related, um, it, it very well could be. There's multiple computers in vehicles today. Uh, some of them have, some of the simple vehicles have 10 or 15 computers and some of the more you know, complex ones have 20 or 30 computers in them and modules talking to each other on two or three different uh, computer languages or, or bit rates. So uh, even though you may think that a rear defogger not working properly in your car sometimes wouldn't ever be related to a check engine light being on, it actually may be. So 
give them all the information you can think of, uh, and that's going to help you get your car back and get it back to you quicker. Um, that's another addition to Tech Talk. I hope it helps you guys out, and uh, we look forward to doing business with you.